everybody. Happy belated Thanksgiving, happy upcoming Hanukkah, upcoming Christmas, happy whatever I left out, happy New Year's. <laughs> I hope I covered the gamut there. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving in spite of all of the insanity that is going on. Down here, what we're doing on the island is everybody is wrapping up in coats and sitting on their front porches and talking to neighbors uh, and sharing the latest dish that they added to the th Thanksgiving meal. And it was pretty cool. I mean, I, I like that. It, it was fun. We usually have a great big deal and I'm worn out and my husband ends up having to do all the dishes with my son and so um, this was nice. It was very nice and very, very relaxing. Um, I've talked to a lot of people who have been very creative about Thanksgiving and I just talked to one woman friend and I asked her, well, what did you do? And she said, a girlfriend and I, we ate pizza. And I thought, whoa, that's a good idea. <laughs> Store that away for New Year's Eve. <laughs> um, but also there are a lot of people who have been by themselves, who have been depressed, who have been um, just feeling overwhelmed with emotion. Um, and some people have talked about what's called suicidal ideation. Suicidal ideation is not committing the act of suicide, but thinking a lot about it. It's about self-destructive behavior. It involves being by ourselves with nobody else there, not on Zoom, not on FaceTime, not on Skype, not on anything. And so what happens is that we have this, we have this sad, sad play that goes on in our head when we're in a situation where we're so isolated. And it goes something like this. Well, I guess I really am alone in the world. I believe nobody really is there for me. I feel so incredibly lonely, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to use technology, so I don't I don't even know what to, I don't even have any, anybody to reach out to. How do I do that? Um, nobody answers my emails anymore, so why bother? Um, and pe people tend to get this sense in their head that life is very unmanageable. Yes, it is. And that they begin to feel kind of insane. I know a couple of times I have felt that way. I have felt like, whoa, this is such a lonely feeling. I have my spiritual self and that's really good and that has really helped me a lot. And I think that whether you are a religious person or a person who is exploring or you're a person who is an atheist or an agnostic or um, it doesn't matter. You got to have some kind of faith. Even if you're a tree hugger, I'm not kidding guys, you have to have some sort of faith. And so usually around this time of the year, I'm making trips back and forth to North Carolina to a little cabin I have way up in the Appalachian mountains. And when I'm up there, I can just sit and look at the mountain and that fills me up and I haven't been able to get there. And so that's, that's made me feel pretty empty, pretty empty. I know my sons are feeling kind of crazy too. Um, and then my husband, <laughs> he's always asking what he can get at the store. If you can please run to the store. What do I need? Pumpkin spice. What do I need? <laughs> so everybody handles it in their own way. But what we might want to do through this season is look for ways that we can deal with this sort of stress that's been put upon us with this pandemic. If we can find ways to connect with other people, um, I mean, <laughs> There are people who I connect with in all different matters. I mean, it's not just Zoom. It's not just Facebook. 
or facey time as my son likes to call it. Um, but I connect with people in a number of ways. A lot of friends of mine are going back to the old fashioned telephone. That's right. <laughs> the old fashioned telephone. And so we'll call each other up and if nobody picks up the phone, we'll just leave a message, some kind of funny message. And then we'll say, I love you. And I'll try to get back with you soon. Um, but yes, the telephone, I'm finding I'm using it a lot more than before. Um, also, I like to go to groups that are on Zoom because being involved in groups on Zoom, whether it's self-help or religious or whatever, um, it's like you're, you're in a, a Roman cathedral and all the seats are full and what's going on down below is happiness, joy, peace, grief, and love. So that's another thing, you know? So I do, I do once a day, I do a group Zoom meeting. Aside from contacting a few people um, by uh, Facebook and maybe Skype. But I have to stay in contact with somebody every single day. And we don't have to talk about horrible, awful things unless one of us is going through horrible, awful things. We can do chit chat, kids, dogs, you know, cats, <laughs> um, the weather, um, art, crafts, music, poetry. We can talk about all that stuff online. Um, and I think it's wonderful to have that technology and to be able to use it. I know it's very intimidating for a lot of people. Oh my gosh, what do I do? How do I do it? Well, it took me a while too. you know, the brainiac here. It, did. it took me a while to, to learn how to do it. And so I had a Zoom deal today and um, tonight I'll have a Zoom group tonight and um, I'll have a couple of Zoom clients tomorrow and I'll talk to some friends and family um, on the phone tomorrow, but it's about not isolating ourselves between this, this, really it's this, isolating ourselves between our own two ears and the only person we hear talking is ourselves and all of that garbage and bad stuff that we might have learned in childhood that we might have learned before the pandemic set in that we might have learned just in trying to figure this whole deal out we have to have we have to have a sounding board so i had a sounding board with somebody today on zoom and that was really really nice to be able to not only learn something but to be able to get some feedback on what's you know what really is going on with me and for someone else to take a look at my skewed behavior about certain things that I catastrophize about catastrophize don't you love that word I'll make a mountain out of a molehill and then I'll once again be back in that place now if we are people who are really used to being hermits and we're really used to being by ourselves and that one meeting, face-to-face -face meeting or uh, group gathering per week or every two weeks did it for us, well, things have changed. And so now it's just not the same. And so what we, can, we tend to do is we tend to say, I give up, I don't wanna do this anymore. And that's where some of the self-destructiveness comes in. So sadly, alcoholism is on the rise addiction is on the rise, um, uh, food addictions are on the rise, um, all of the things that we can use to hide from our own feelings are on the rise. And so what we end up doing is self-destructing in front of the TV, sitting in our PJs all day long for several weeks at a time, and um, that's a dangerous place. That's a dangerous place for me to be in. 
I have to get up, I have to have a schedule. Even if I'm totally depressed and down and out, I have to have a schedule. So I get up and I do A and I do B and I do C and I do, I have like a ritual of things that get me going. Um, everybody in this house has a different schedule. So we all have our own individual creature comforts that we do so that we can begin to feel right sized. For a while, I was so depressed, I had to have a Coke <laughs> sitting by the night nightstand in one of those Yukon cups uh, full of ice. So the first thing I could see was that, because that, that's like a treat for me, because I don't drink a lot of soft drinks. Um, and that got me going. And then it moved to something else, and then it moved to something else. So there will be people who will have, my mother's uh, birthday is coming up, and my grandfather's birthday just passed. And both of them are deceased, and I know that my mother had a very, very difficult passing. And there's just a lot of, lot of there's just a lot of stuff there. And so for those two days, I know that for the last um, passing with my grandfather, I really, really had to like get organized. And I am not an organized person at all. <laughs> Zip zero nada. <laughs> so, but I did have to get somewhat organized um, with my thinking, with remembering to think about him remembering to talk to him or say a prayer to him or um, just something, look at pictures of him. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was a way of reminding myself that I might have a little grief. And if it got too bad, I would write a letter which included my resentments towards my grandfather, my regrets about things like we didn't have more time, um, and then my appreciations. And in doing that, I had a format to share how I was feeling at that moment, at that photograph moment in time. Now with my mother's, and her birthday is coming up and she passed at age 38. And I have lots of contact with her. <laughs> what can I say? I do. Um, but sometimes I get really, really sad about not having a mother here in the physical. And so if I'm not careful, if I'm not careful, I can go down really fast. And that was like, what? Oh my gosh. What? Like a long, long time ago that she passed. And then I have to get on the phone with somebody and give them a call. And the first thing I do is ask, how are you doing? And then after they tell me how they are doing, I will say, I'm feeling kind of down right now. Today is my mother's birthday. And so that usually helps a ton. And then I go back to my ritualistic behavior of, you know, doing this, making the bed, cooking that, contacting certain people, uh, work, all that stuff. So. Um, we have to honor that. So if you have relatives whose birthdays or anniversaries are coming up, um, you might start to feel a little bit depressed, kind of sad, not know why. Um, and you might find yourself asking, you, you might feel that empty, that empty, that empty feeling of where do I go from now? I used to put a big X on a calendar, a big red X, so that I could remember everybody's passing dates, birthdays, anniversaries. In that way, when I started to get kind of squirrely and uh, didn't feel real comfortable in my own skin, I'd have that calendar to look at and I could go, oh my gosh, yes, that's what's happening. Oh, wow. This is also a good time to mourn any losses for the year. <clears throat> any losses that you have had this year? Well, maybe health, business, um, divorce, 
loss of home, children moving out. It's a really good time to take a look at those losses and to feel them because those two can make us feel really, really out of sorts. Um, and they usually have a month or a date to them. And so those two get a big red X in my book. Um, it's okay to have grief. It's okay to have grief. It's okay to, you know, like cry. It's okay to be upset. It's okay um, to be angry. The trick is to do it responsibly. And what does that mean? What that means is we don't self-destruct. We don't self-destruct and we don't injure other people. And we're honest with ourselves. We're authentic with ourselves. We don't have to put on the paper mask anymore and act like things are peachy keen. I've talked to you guys about this before, about being asked, um, is it okay if I don't want to put a Christmas tree up or Hanukkah lights or if I don't want to do this? My husband, wife, child, best friend, pet passed away and I'm just not in the mood right now. And my answer always is, sure, come up with your own tradition. Do something that works for you. Like my girlfriend who, her and her sister, they ate pizza. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. <laughs> so anyway, I will be available. And if anybody needs to get in touch with me, they can email me at drsbrandon at live.com. You know, just drop me a line. It always takes me a million years to get back to people, but um, I do get back to everybody. So with that said, rest, take care of yourselves, give yourselves permission to cry, to laugh, to feel joy, and to feel depressed. That's okay. It's okay to feel depressed as long as we can anchor it to something. Because depression isn't just about us being dysfunctional or we're not trying hard enough or we're not doing the right thing for the kids or the husband or the job or whatever. It's okay to just be authentic and to take a moment and to leave the party, leave the meeting, leave the work thing, family thing, and just go someplace quiet and have a few tears and remember a few things. And then you'll feel so much better and much more able to go back and at least nod your head. <laughs> That's been my experience. So bless you all and in divine light, take care. Mm -hmm.